In this video, I wanted to practice finding the slope of various different lines. Um, and to begin with, it's always uh, easy to find the slope of a line which is in slope-intercept form because it is literally just going to be the coefficient on x. But if it's not on x, um, then we have we have to figure it out somehow. But like in the case of, say, this next example, which we, we solved the slope to be uh, 2 based on the graph that we created. Um, well, another, another way to do it is to solve for y or to solve, you know, just to solve the equation. Or sometimes we might phrase it, rewrite it in slope-intercept form. That's just another way of saying, well, if y is on one side, that always is going to be in slope-intercept form if we actually do that. So like in the case of this equation, if I wanted to solve for y, that means I want to get it all by itself. So since, you know, the strategy here is very similar to a basic equation, I want to get rid of everything else, put the x on the other side from y. And I want to also move any other numbers to the other side as well. But here, the number's already there, but I have the 2x, which I would want to subtract. So let me just recopy it down. I have 2x minus y is equal to 3. And basically, I could subtract 2x from both sides in order to move it away. And remember, I would want to do the whole thing. I don't want to divide by 2 here because that would get rid of the 2 but not the x. But I want to, I want the whole thing. Um, and div dividing is not what I want to do because really this is a whole term which is positive and subtracting it is the only way to cancel a term like that. And that would give us with negative y is equal to, you could write this as 3 minus 2x, but I'd rather write it as negative 2x plus 3 because this is a more common way. Uh, usually we write the x term first and the number term second, just as a convention, because right, that's how we did it with slope-intercept. Uh, and the last thing is, well, y is negative, which we don't want. We want it to just be y. So again, I could divide by negative 1, or another way is just negating the equation, which if I want to change y to a positive, I can always do that by just changing everything to a positive. If this were an inequality, I'd have to flip this, the sign, but it's an equation, so I don't have to worry about that. And I just change the negative term to positive and positive to negative. And this would give me my equation in slope-intercept form, or solve for y, same same difference. Um, but again, this is valuable because notice now I know the slope and the y-intercept, which are things that I was not sure about before doing this, and that's a pretty simple way to determine those basic traits of the line. Um, and, you know, again, you could use a lot of these other methods. You could first graph it and then find the rise of run. You could solve points and use the formula. There are a number of different ways. So like if you're given in a question like this, a line who passes through these two points, you technically could do a whole bunch of stuff. You could graph it, you could find its equation. We're gonna talk more about that um, in class this week. Um, but it's usually just easier to use a formula because if you know two points, we have a way of determining the slope just based on that alone. Um, but you know, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. If, if I have the points, I would usually use this formula. If I have a graph, I would usually use rise of a run. If I have an equation, I would usually solve for y. Because to me, that's the most direct way to get at it. Like with the last one on this, um, on the slides here, notice that it's in slope-intercept form because it's already solved for y. So basically the slope I know right off the bat is one half. Whereas this one, I don't know the slope yet because it's not solved for y yet. But again, there is a shortcut uh, as was in the previous slide where the slope is going to just be the ratio between negative a over b, which the, the, this is a and this is b. So you could just create a formula. But uh, again, whatever way makes the most sense to you is fine. But uh, actually, also in the last example, you might have wondered, you might, there, there's actually another way to do this. Instead of subtracting 2x, I could add y and subtract 3. It's kind of an easier way so that I'm not leaving y as negative. So my, my point is there's another way I could do this and I just wanted to show you. Well, here I could subtract 3x to get y by itself, but what I would probably do is I would probably add 5y just to make it positive. And when things are positive, they're generally easier. And at the same time, I could subtract 8 to the other side. So I sort of would just interchange them and change the signs as I do that as a shortcut. But, you know, I don't want to go too fast or skip too many steps. But really, I'm just using the property of equality to add 5y to both sides and subtract 8 to both sides. And all that would do is it would interchange where they are uh, and flip the signs on each. 
And now I've got 5y by itself. I could just divide by 5 to finish getting y all by itself. So y would be equal to 3x minus 8 divided by 5. Um, and also, the last little thing about this is remember when you're dividing both sides by a number, if there's multiple terms like in an equation like this, that 5 needs to be divided from the whole left side, which you can't just pick and choose where you divide. With adding and subtracting, you can because it will happen term by term. But with multiplication and division, it always needs to be done to everything um, because it, if, you, if you don't, it's not gonna it's not gonna truly be equal. Uh, and really, how I, basically I could use since there is a common denominator on this larger fraction, you could always what I often call the splitting rule: split it into two parts, three fifths x. Let me write it like this: three fifths x, or three x over five minus eight over five. And notice why this works is because, notice these two fractions have the same denominator. When I have a common denominator, I'm allowed to subtract and that would just join back together. And to me, this makes it a little bit easier. Um, and when I'm writing a fraction, another thing about where x is, a lot of times we actually write it like this instead, three-fifths x outside, um, which is a more common way of writing that. But in summary, our slope is three-fifths. Um, but since th when you're taking a fraction and multiplying by x, it's the same thing as 3x over 5 because when, when something multiplies into a fraction, if it is a whole number or whatever, it's always going to multiply into the numerator. Again, another property of fractions. So there's a lot of little fraction-y things in here um, that, but just remember the x can't go on the bottom. That doesn't work when you're multiplying by a fraction. But long story short, our, our slope here is going to be positive 3 fifths. That's just one of many ways to figure it out. Another way to figure it out is by graphing the line, as we've done a couple times, uh, or just again taking the ratio of negative a over b, which again would just be three, negative three over negative five, which would be three fifths. Uh, that wraps up this video on slope, uh, and we'll talk a lot more about equations uh, in the upcoming class.